Dinosaur at the O2 Arena in London. The show is based on the BBC TV programme Walking with Dinosaurs and has already been seen by three million people across the world. Many a boy's dream to play with dinosaurs, but it's not everyone's dad who gets to drive one. Six-year-old Jasper from Peterborough gets to see his dad in a live dinosaur show. He's the one steering one of these life-size monsters. My dinosaur uh, basically comes onto the stage, has some food to eat, goes around and checks her, her eggs. She has some eggs on stage with some hatch hatchlings in them. It's a mummy dinosaur. And when it calls its babies, it goes like, mmm. You can't see very much from inside the dinosaur. You're basically directed around the stage um, by the uh, voodoo operators, the puppeteers. Um, we do have some visibility where we do take control, but most of the, most of the time we are um, driving blind, for want of a better word. Dad is away touring for a whole year, which is hard on family life, but it's a dream job and exciting when they see the show. Seeing him moving around in the dinosaurs, it, you, you do forget, you know that your husband's underneath this huge thing driving it, but you're just swept up in it and you're, see, you're seeing a dinosaur move and you've never seen one of those before. So, you know, so it's quite exciting. You do kind of get swept up in the, in the show. It, it is amazing. You can't really see him because he's underneath and he's hidden by lots of gauze and things, but um, you know, I know he's there. <laughs> Each dinosaur has a driver and two puppeteers, one operating head and tail, the other making it blink and roar. But for a six-foot-tall dad, it's a tight squeeze. He's really good of it, and he has a car licence, and he has and 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 now he has. Uh, dinosaur license. Dinosaur license. Emma Ball, BBC Look East, Peterborough. Oh, fun. <laughs> it must be great. And what a cool job to say your dad does. But there are three of them in there. Yeah, well, it's quite big, it's isn't great, it? It's great, isn't it? Bigger than a car. Yeah, I wonder where you, whether, whether you have to take an MO, uh, a, a, a driving test. For well, it. as you say, he needs a dinosaur driving yes. licence, didn't he? Bless I you. like the idea of one of those. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like a lot of fun, a lot more fun than driving my car. Now, we've got a lot of weather Anything's to talk about. Anything's a lot more we? fun than driving your car. <laughs> no, Whoa, your car's very nice. stop, stop. <laughs> Let's leave them to I'm it, shall we? Listen to them. They're still at it. Come along, we need to talk about the forecast, children. <laughs> Well, today, in the best of the sunshine, we've had temperatures as high as 29 degrees Celsius, which is 84 degrees Fahrenheit. But as Susie said, there's a lot of weather to talk about, especially in the west, because this afternoon, that's where we've already seen some heavy torrential downpours and some thunder and lightning as well. Now, the risk of that heavy, thundery weather continues through this evening and overnight tonight. That rain will become more widespread, although at the moment, the further east you are, the more likely it is that you'll avoid the heavy, thundery stuff and your rain will be lighter and more patchy. But elsewhere, the potential for those heavy, thundery downpours, but actually that rain clearing quite quickly if all goes to plan. So by about 6 o'clock in the morning, most of it should be gone. Now, uh, temperatures around 14 to 16 Celsius after a very humid midday, it's going to be a pretty sticky night. These will be the lowest values probably towards the end of the night, so for much of the time, it is going to be much warmer than this, and the winds just a very light north to northwesterly. So tomorrow, how quickly that rain actually clears towards the end of the night depends on how quickly this weather front pulls away. Now, at the moment, it looks like it's going to rattle through quite quickly. So, as I said, that rain should disappear away to the north. And apart from a few more showers feeding back down from the northwest, it should be largely dry. And the reverse of recent days, with the west enjoying the best of the sunshine and brightness. Temperatures tomorrow, not quite as high as today, but still ranging from about 21 to 25 degrees Celsius, which would take us from the low to high 70s Fahrenheit and the winds remaining that very light uh, north to northwesterly. So that's Friday, and then from Saturday, it looks like high pressure will build. So it should be fine and dry all of the way. Uh, I think over the weekend and on Monday, it should feel less humid as well, although temperatures remaining above normal, 21 is about uh, average for the time of year. So uh, warm days to come with light winds but less humid, which is probably better for a lot of people. And then Tuesday, if the winds go southwesterly again, they could drag in much warmer air. So we could see those temperatures coming right back up again to around 26 degrees. 
degrees Celsius, taking us back into the high 70s Fahrenheit. And uh, as for overnight lows, between about 12 and 15 degrees Celsius. The average is about 11 to 13 Celsius, so on most nights we're a little bit above. But again, hopefully it won't be quite so sticky. And if you want to check your barometer, in the northwest of the region, it should be around 1,019 millibars, which is 30.09 inches of mercury. And in the southeast, it should be around 1,018 millibars, which is 30.06 inches of mercury. That's the forecast. Have you two sorted it out? We're, we're at peace. Yeah, no, no, no. It's driving a car, not her car. So it's my a driving. No, no. Talking about. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night. <laughs>